Toronto Skyline is set for a dynamic growth. In a few years from now, Toronto Skyline is going to look something like this. There are going to be more of super tall condo towers and less of low to mid-rise condo buildings. So in this video, I'm going to show you good low to mid-rise condo buildings in the city of Toronto. So do watch this video till the end if you do want to miss out living in a condo building which has functional layout good sense of community and overall decent living experience. And also these type of condo buildings, which are low to mid rise, they tend to perform well in terms of appreciation as opposed to high rise condo buildings. And also before we proceed, I just got a quick favor. If you get any value out of this content, then please smash that like button. And 96% of our viewers are not subscribed. Therefore, I request you please subscribe to the channel. It really helps the channel to grow. And if you've got any questions about real estate, you can book a call with me by clicking on the first link mentioned in the description below. Now, without wasting any time, let's get right into it. So the first building we're looking at is at 18 Stafford Street. It's 11 story buildings, more of a mid-rise condo building. It is developed by Plaza Corp Investment Limited. They are pretty decent developers. Age of this building is 20 years old. And the maintenance fee we're looking at is 63 cents per square foot, in my opinion, which is not too bad. And the condos in this building sell for about like $1,000 square foot. So basically you can find a one bedroom condo for about 600,000 give and take. And the location is pretty solid too. I'll quickly show you on the map. So 18 Stafford is located right over here which is at intersection of King Street and Strawn. If I quickly zoom in I'll show you over here and it is located right beside Stanley Park which is pretty cool uh, and you have access to the Lake Ontario which is not too far which is about like 10 to 15 minutes walk and if you were to go to the city that is core of city near financial district uh, you can take a streetcar from King Street and get to financial district in about like 20 to 25 minutes depending on the traffic too and if you were to get out at the gardener towards the west side again it, depending on the traffic again i know the traffic in the city is not the best but if without traffic you can get onto the highway in about like five to ten minutes of drive it's not too bad so location wise it's pretty solid and let me quickly show you the last listing which was sold in the building so let's check that out so this is the recent one bedroom listing which was sold in the building this was sold for six hundred fifteen thousand dollars it's about 589 square feet and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 426 so that is pretty good the maintenance fee is not too high which includes water and heat hydro is separate also includes parking and a locker so in my opinion this is a pretty sweet deal and if you check out the layouts in the building they're pretty good and if you check out this one bedroom condo which was sold earlier this year that is february of 2024 uh you can see there's a peninsula style kitchen which we are not getting often in a new condo buildings these days so this is something good and pretty decent and overall i think this is a pretty functional layout for a one bedroom condo and these type of layout generally tend to do well and there's always the demand of these types of layout in the city so now let's go ahead and check out the next building Next up is 88 Colgate Avenue. This building is located on the east side of the city. This building is just seven stories and is developed by Aragon Properties Limited, decent developers. This building is 10 years old and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 70 cents per square foot, which is not bad. Uh, and the condos in this building sell for at a higher price point. They sell for about like $1,100 to $1,200 per square foot. This is actually one of my favorite buildings and I will tell you why. One is that it has pretty good sense of community. Uh, you don't see high turnover of renters moving in or moving out. Overall, to be honest, the renter to owner ratio, there are more owners in this building as, a pair, as opposed to renters. And you also don't see high turnover of sales volume in this building. So that is something good. And secondly, overall functionality of the units in this building are pretty good. Uh, you don't feel that you are in a small cookie cutter condo. So that is something cool. And if you check out the right picture, most of the condo buildings in this building have exposed brick walls. So that is something pretty cool. Now let's go ahead and check out the location of this building. So as mentioned earlier, this building is located on the east end part of the city. And if I zoom in over here, that's the exact location. And the intersection we're looking at is Queen Street East and Carlo Avenue. And just on the west side of this building, there's a Jimmy Simpson Park, which is not too bad, which is about like a couple of minutes walk from this building. In terms of transit accessibility, I'll be honest with you, it's not the best if you were to go to financial district or core of this downtown Toronto from this building. It takes about like 30, 35 minutes commute via streetcar, but down the line, they are setting up a subway station over here, which is going to be part of the Ontario line. Apparently that's going to be completed by 2031, but hope for the best. But once completed, it's going to make the commute from this location to go towards the core of the city so much easier. And in terms of accessibility to DVP, it's not too bad. It's just around the corner. And towards the east side of this location, you can go to Woodbine Beach, which is about like 10 to 15 minutes commute by car. And overall, it's a very good neighborhood in my opinion, especially if you're someone who's looking for a quieter neighborhood or want to be away from the hustle bustle of downtown core but at the same time you are close to the core i think this location is ideal for you so now let's go ahead and check out the next building 
Next up again, we're heading back to the west end of the city and we're looking at 20 Stewart Street. This building is eight stories and is developed by Free Developments, pretty solid developers in the city. This building is 17 years old and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 65 cents per square foot, which is pretty sweet. And the condos in this building sell at a higher price point. They sell for about like 11 to $1,200 per square foot. So basically you can find one bedroom condo for about 600 to $650,000 give and take. And again, you do find a good sense of community in the building. Uh, you don't see high turnover of uh, sales or high turnover of renting happening in the building i'll quickly show you one fun fact so here we go so here's the data of all the transaction which happens in the building 20 steward street and if you see in the year of 2024 there was only one sale so far in 2023 there was zero number of sales which happened in the building and if you look at the penthouse 901 this condo was sold for 4.4 million in the year of 2022 and apparently this condo was featured in the famous tv series suits and this condo was used as harry specter's uh, condo i'll quickly show you a couple of uh, pictures for your reference so it's, that's pretty cool to see that uh, it was featured in um, suits and here we are it's a pretty massive condo that's the living area it's huge. And I'll quickly show you the location of this building. In terms of location, it is located right at Stewart Street and Portland, which is over here. And uh, it's in the King West, so it's in the heart of all, where you have access to bars, restaurants, clubs. So keeping that in mind, I would avoid facing, or I, I would avoid getting a condo in this building, which is facing north, because if you're facing north, you have, you have exposure to all these bars, restaurants, and clubs. So you might hear noise, especially at night. So I would, if you're getting a condo in this building, I would suggest getting them on the south side or it has an exposure of south so that you are tucked away from all the noise uh, that's something i wanted to point that out so overall it's a good location you have access to the well which is about like five to seven minutes walk from this building there's a small park on the south side of this building and uh, in terms of accessibility to financial district it's about like 10 to 15 minutes commute via streetcar and the streetcar stop is around the corner which is about a couple of minutes walk from this building so let's go ahead and check out the next building so the fourth building i want to talk about is 43 hannah avenue also called toy factory lofts so this used to be a toy factory and in 2008 lantera developments converted into a loft so that's pretty cool uh, this is an eight-story building and it's developed by lantera and the age of this building is 16 years since 2008 and before that this building used to be as i said used to be a toy factory so it goes way back to 1900s so it's a pretty old building overall and the maintenance fee is pretty less in this building so it's about 60 cents per square foot and the condos in this building sell for about like thousand to eleven hundred dollars per square foot depending on the size and the type of condo we're looking at so i'll quickly show you a couple of pictures of the listing which was recently sold so let's check that out so here's the listing of the unit which was sold in the building this year in june of 2024 it's a one plus ten with two washrooms was sold for one million twenty five thousand dollars and the size of the condo is about thousand to twelve hundred square feet and the maintenance fee we're looking at is seven twelve so if you consider the size of this unit it, it is pretty good the maintenance fee is pretty good and it has comes with a parking and a locker so i'll quickly show you a couple of pictures of the unit so here's the picture of the unit and you can see the exposed beam uh, on the ceiling which is pretty cool and it's a pretty nice unit in my opinion that's the den and it's the bathroom and that's the patio area which is looking out into uh, some greenery which is not bad and this is the floor plan of the unit pretty narrow but still it's sold for that price point anyhow and in terms of location it is located right in liberty village uh, on hannah avenue it's a pretty good location in my opinion and overall good building in a good neighborhood now let's go ahead and check out the next building so now the fifth good building, which is low to mid-rise in the city, we're going to talk about is 505 Richmond Street West, also called Waterworks. This building is located in the Queen West. Uh, this building is 13 stories, that's it, and it's developed by Mod Developments. Uh, two years old, it's a fairly new building, and the maintenance fee we're looking at is 85 cents per square foot. And the condo buildings in this building sell for about like $1,100 per square foot pretty solid building in my opinion i've seen units in this building they're pretty unique layout and functional layout in my opinion and again rent to owner ratio there are more end users who are living in this building and low turnover of renters and as well as uh, the sales volume is pretty less in this building and they have recently opened up a food hall in the building it is pretty massive and it's basically a fancier version of a food court so that's pretty cool and uh, in terms of location i'll quickly show you on the maps 
So this is where the building is located. It's located right at Brandt and Richmond Street West. That's the intersection we're looking at. And good neighborhood, just south side of the building, there's a nice dog park which recently opened up. So which is sweet. You've got nice restaurants and nice, pretty good coffee shops around the area. So overall, it's a pretty good vibe in this neighborhood. So that's pretty much for today. I hope I was able to give you some value. And if you've got any questions, please feel free to reach out to me anytime. And thank you so much. See you in the next video.